Hi guys. <sighs> a bunch of people told me that I should make a video all about when I went to go see Death Cat for Cutie last week, so I figured <laughs> I can do that. That's easy. I get excited about shit very easily. Make sure this is filming. Yep, it's filming. This is my mirror. Mm. Yeah, so I saw Death Cat for Cutie at the Crocodile this week. Like, holy shit. I'm still kind of like, what? How did that happen? Because the tickets went on sale like last Friday and they sold out in like a minute. So I figured I was not going to get press access at all, but I asked my editor anyway. And then we didn't hear back until like 2.30, um, the day of the show. So that was me that day filming, being all frantic and being like, I'm going to see Death Cat for Cutie. And I eventually got somebody to cover my shift. So that was all good. Yeah, I fucking saw Death Cat for Cutie. And apparently I wasn't supposed to bring my camera, but nobody told me that at the door. So I got photos, so you can see photos. So I went with my friend Andrea. <laughs> we both got to experience the show together. And I've actually been to shows with her before. She's like one of my concert buddies. She's always in the front row. And I'm always like, what's up? Like if I'm in the photo pit, like I high five. We're just palsies. So we got there super early. And there weren't that many people actually in line to begin with, which is weird because it sold out so fast. So I figured there was just gonna be a huge line of people, but it was really early. And generally the Death Cab crowd is like 30 now. Say hi, open the show. Another guy from Barsook Records who've actually seen like four years ago at Bumbershoot. He's really awesome, he was super fun. He was dorky and looked like a politician and was playing with a synthesizer on his laptop. And then we had like half an hour to kill until Death Cab started. And I was just like, Andrea, what songs do you wanna hear? Oh, I wanna hear these songs. Ah, feelings. Like we were just going over of like everything that we wanted to happen. I've actually never seen Death Cab in a small venue before this. The only times I'd ever seen them before was at Bumbershoot and at Sasquatch. And then I saw Ben obviously play with Postal Service when they played at Sasquatch a couple of years ago. So I never got to experience Death Cab in this small club venue situation, which is weird because like, I've, I've been to the Crocs so many times. Like it's one of my favorite venues in Seattle, even though I have a love-hate relationship with it because like my car got broken into when I saw Watsky there, but I digress. Having this band that I've loved for over 11 years in this venue that I've loved for almost five and I've seen so many of my friends play at was this really surreal experience because it was like this really familiar place with this really familiar band but familiar in different ways because Death Cab's headlining festivals these days like they're not playing tiny venues and you don't get to see that every day and you don't get to experience that every day and the fact that I got to experience it is so valuable and so wonderful because it still felt like hometown, even though they're like headlining festivals and like not living in Seattle anymore and like being all big and famous and shit. I don't know about me, but like I'm pretty sure everybody in their mid to late 20s has some sort of death cab experience story thing. Whether it's like seeing them for the first time on the OC because of Seth Cohen's like lovable indiness or because of like the late days of MTV2. That's just how it happened. Like Death Cab epitomizes my adolescence and I got to experience that on Tuesday with my friend Andrea who was as excited to see them as I was. And that's the best thing. Like going to shows with people who care about the band as much as you do is like the most fun experience. Like especially if they're your friend and it just, it makes friendship stronger. Now I'm just getting on a tangent, but they played a whole bunch of old songs, specifically my favorite, um, Why You'd Want to Live Here, an anti-love song to Los Angeles, because Los Angeles is not that great. Um, they played Crooked Teeth, they started out with I Will Possess Your Heart, which was so epic, and they played I Will Follow You Into the Dark, blah blah blah, and everybody sang along, it was really sappy, and blah, 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 blah. that song is so overrated, like, you guys don't even know how overrated that song is. <laughs> that song. But they didn't play The Sound of Settling, which was weird, which I feel like they probably would have. Like, I, is that just me? Like, that's just the song that like we all remember from like 2002 and stuff. Maybe not, I don't know. Ben Gibbard, just those songs epitomize teenage years for me. As much as I love We Are Scientists and as much as I love The Killers and as much as I love so many bands that I started listening to when I was like 15, 16, 17, Death Cab for Cutie is my adolescence. Like, <laughs> it really is. And 
most people my age have that same feeling. One thing that I was really like nervous about was seeing the new guitar player because this was the first show that they've played without Chris Walla. So I was like super anxious about like how it was gonna work and who they were gonna get and if I recognized the person. And turns out I did recognize the person. This guy named Dave Depper from Portland. I saw play with Menomina like at Sasquatch a year and a half ago. So I did know the guy, not personally, but I knew of him. He was awesome, he was so good. And then they got a new keyboard player named like Zach Ray or something. And he had a really epic beard and like man bun, which were lovely. It felt different from when I've seen them before, but it was really fitting that they played this show at the Croc because Ben actually told this story about playing the Croc the first time back in like 1998 when they barely really were like making it as a band and Ben had seen so many shows at the Crocodile before and this was like pre pre remodel this was like the old Crocodile and he was like it just it dawned on me that we're like a real fucking band now and it, it was almost too much for me to handle because we sold out the Croc and it was like what and now however many 17 years later they sold out the Croc again as this new incarnation of this band. And it was so emotional and so meaningful. And especially during the fucking encore, because they played Transatlanticism as the closing song. And I was just like, <laughs> feels too many of them. Yeah, it was really awesome. And I'm really happy that I got to experience that because it was really special. And you don't get to do that all the time. So yeah, so. Uh, I was entirely self-indulgent, but you guys asked for it, so <laughs> you can't complain. Today's song of the day is Why You'd Want to Live Here, because it was a surprise hearing that song there, and it's one of my favorite songs, because Los Angeles isn't that great. <laughs> I'm just gonna ramble now. I need to stop, because I have somebody coming over very soon. Where are you, boy? That'd be weird if you walked in right now. Like, why are you talking to your camera? I'm talking. Let me know what you guys want to see in my next video though, because I like getting some sort of like ideas and requests for you guys. And let me know if you guys would be up for like a meetup because I have all these days off because I'm not getting enough hours at my work, so that's fun. Yeah, cool stuff. I promise my next video won't be talking about music. You know, that could be cool. I don't know. Okay guys, I'm gonna go now. Here we go. Ugh. Way bouncier than it needed to be.